guys, my name is Matt Bell. I'm an electric violinist based in Cary, North Carolina, United States, right outside Raleigh. It's a nice city in the south. We got good food, we got good weather. We got an airport. What else you need, man? Um, I work at an electric violin shop two or three days a week for them. Answer emails, answer the phone, sometimes throw a violin in a box, slap a shipping label on it, send it out. Not very often though. Mostly just answer emails and phone calls and make videos and stand around and look like a, a guy who plays the violin. <laughs> I am a solid body electric guy. I, I do own a couple of acoustic violins, but I almost never play them out. It's almost 100% solid body electric because you get really loud. You don't have to worry about feedback because loud is good. Right now, I can choose an artist to do a duet. Like, in the middle of a pandemic, are you can like anybody. I will play with anybody. I don't even have to like you. I will play, you can play playing bad music and I wanna play with you. Quiet music, like church mouse music, which I hate, I hate that stuff. But I'll play anything right, God, get me on the stage, anybody. I will play with anybody right now, I will. Anybody, anywhere, let's play. What kind of bow? I am a Coda bow guy. I've got a marquee for playing that buttery smooth classical stuff that I'm really known for. And then I got a jewel for playing the rock stuff. This is for the extended range, the, the uh, five and six string violins. And it's uh, it just pulls a huge big tone, it's really fat and it moves those big heavy strings easy, just easy. It's got all kinds of muscle. Do I play with a shoulder rest or without a shoulder rest? I can play without a shoulder rest. What am I saying? I'm terrible without a shoulder rest. I have to have a shoulder rest. If I have a shoulder rest, I can play okay. If I don't have a shoulder rest, I can't play okay. It's not so good. Sorry. I would really like to play basketball if they would let you tackle people. Um, but they don't. It's crazy. I fouled out in the first half of a game one time. Turns out they do not appreciate you tackling people in basketball. Uh, not like the European style football, American football. The kind where we got the weird shape ball and the rules that don't make any sense. I like that game because I like to hit people. What is my favorite solo on violin? Gosh. This sounds really arrogant <laughs> and egotistical. I like playing my music. Um, I think maybe one of the favorite ones I've done lately is uh, the outro solo for my original tune called Abaga. Yeah, I like that. That's, that's fun to play. I like that one. I'm a Mac guy, so the very first DAW that I used was GarageBand. And I upgraded GarageBand to Logic. My sound guy had, I think, a free copy of Logic that was like Logic Limited or something. And I started using that and I was like, oh, this is dope. 
so then upgraded to logic pro x and yeah i don't i don't know if it's better than the other ones but it's the one i know how to use my favorite social media ah oh, man i spend way too much time on social media it's part of my job for electric violin shop i handle the twitter the instagram some of the facebook a lot of the youtube so i think they're all good for what they're good for and i think they're all really horrible and awful they're giant time sucks and there are some really awful people and it's super toxic if you go to the wrong places. But if you're smart, you can meet a lot of really awesome people. You can learn a lot of cool stuff and you can hear some killer music for free. It's amazing. How many strings? I have a couple of four strings. I have a bunch of five strings and I have two six strings. So my main performance acts right now is a six string. And uh, I don't know, maybe eventually I go to seven. I, I probably will. I say that I'm not going to, but we all know that I probably will. Pizza or salad? Um, I like salad. Mm. If, if you have a salad that instead of lettuce, you do pepperoni. And then instead of like the croutons, you did pepperoni. If instead of the bowl, you had pepperoni. Uh, and then you eat it with a big fork made out of pepperoni. Salad all the way. Both! Both Y and Distortion. It's like cake or ice cream. No, give me both. I gotta have Y and Distortion. Anything that makes it louder and more obnoxious and more cutting and punching and makes people want to break stuff. I grew up on a farm and we had both. I like dogs and cats. Um, I have a dog right now, like a 90 pound dog. He's cool. So if I had to pick, I'd say a dog. I'll just keep my dog. Do I prefer to play or compose? Uh, I'm a performer. I like to perform. I like to be in front of crowds. I like to feel the energy coming out. I love being in front of a huge PA, just windows rattling, people's shirts moving every time somebody kicks the kick drum. I love being on stage. Um, I like playing my music on stage, so I like composing, but if I don't, if I can't play my music on stage, I'll play anybody's music on stage. I just want to play. So um, yeah, I like to compose. I love to compose, but I really like to play. I'm a musician, dude. <laughs> yeah, I try to go to bed very early, like early in the morning, two, three, four o'clock. Try to go to bed then, and then get up about to crack of noon. That's good. That's a good schedule for me. I'm a musician and I'm lazy, so I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna say the trumpet. Turns out I'm already a professional trumpet player. I was. <laughs> Yeah, my school didn't have an orchestra, they had a band, and I wanted to play with other kids, so I learned how to play the trumpet, so I could play in the band. And for a long time, I was actually more interested in trumpet than violin, because I would listen, I grew up near Detroit, so we listened to Motown, and we're listening to uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, and Tower of Power, and Chicago, and all these great horn bands that are out there. And I was hearing, like, trumpet in rock and roll, I didn't hear any violin in rock and roll. I was like, I won't play rock and roll, so I guess trumpet is what it's going to have to be. And it wasn't until I was in my 20s that I discovered um, electric violin and got one of those. And my guitar player was like, oh, that thing's dope, dude. Let's plug it into my amp. And, and I was like, wait, what? This is amazing. I can, I can play rock and roll on this thing. So then I was like, oh, who wants to play the trumpet? Trumpets are stupid. So I'm going to play the violin now. So if I had to pick another instrument, i will pick the trumpet because <laughs> I already know. <laughs> what picture is on my phone? Um, a tube. Distortion, baby. Do I use a multi-effects or a pedal board? Uh, both. Uh, I am a Line 6 Helix guy, 
and I do probably 95% of my processing in the Helix. I actually have two outboard pedals that I use with that. I've got a Boss Harmonist, one of the old school Harmonists. Um, and I've got a, I use that for octave stuff, uh, octave up. And then I've got a uh, Electro Harmonic C9 that I use for making those big lush organ sounds. Make us out. That's what I do. I am not a rule follower. I do not like being told what to do. I have never liked being told what to do. My violin teacher always, she was like, see the reason those Boeing markings are on the page is so that you will play them. That's why I never really played in an orchestra. I was played in band, I played trumpet in the band. But I, if you watch an orchestra and you see the violin section, the bows are all going together. And you got this one that's going crazy that's opposite everybody else. That's me. Yeah, I'm not I'm not good at following sheet music. Um, I actually like playing. I, I, I play a lot of Bach right now in, in practicing and all that. And I'm using Rachel Barton Pine's arrangement of the Bach partitas and sonatas. Um, I, I don't mind sheet music. I hardly ever get paid to play off of a page, uh, mostly improvise. Yeah. Ooh, I'm usually a beer guy, but I got a chance to go hang out with the 3D Various crowd in France last summer, and um, they kind of turned me on to some wine. They got good wine in France, I'm not gonna lie to you. If it's in a glass in front of me, I'm probably gonna drink it. Man, what a great question. It was a long time ago. It might have been, I don't even know. It might have been Motley Crue. It might have been Dr. Feelgood by Motley Crue. Let's say that. Nobody knows any different. I'm a rock guy. So all most of my influences are guitar players. So Stevie Ray Vaughan and Jimi Hendrix and Oh man, David Gilmore from Pink Floyd and Eric Clapton and uh, Guthrie Govan and just all these amazing guitar players and some guys I used to tour with, a guy named Todd Howard who's out with Granger Smith now. Some really, really fantastic guitar players. I love guitar players. Um, so I'd say most of my influences are guitar players. Eric Johnson, Steve Vai, all those guys. Um, violinists, man, uh, Joe Denison, Earl Manian, um, Patrick Contreras, Chuck Bontrager, David Wallace. I mean, there's just so many amazing players out there. Mark Wood. Um, there's some really, really good players out there. Um, and, and it's my job actually at Electric Violin Shop to meet and hang out with a lot of these people. So, man, just so many, man. Black Violin and D Sharp and Rob Flax and just, man, and you're gonna get me going. This list is gonna go on forever. Am I Superman or Batman? I don't know, I'm not rich. So uh, I guess I'd have to go with Superman. And uh, I like to fly around and break stuff. Is that a Superman thing? Or is that a Batman thing? I don't know. I don't watch those movies. But whichever one is cooler. <laughs> I'm the other one. Am I more rock, jazz, or classical? Dancer or an altar boy? Well, I've tried to dance and I'm not too good at it. Um, I actually was an altar boy, believe it or not. In that Lutheran church that we went to, I was an acolyte for a while. It's like the guy that comes up and lights the candles before the service. And at the end of the service, you come and you snuff them out. They get real mad if you, if you do that. Um, yeah, I know how to be an altar boy. And I kind of know how to be a really bad dancer, but I think I'm a better altar boy, which is really sad. But I am. It's true. I started playing violin just before I turned three. Uh, my mom and dad got me a violin for my third birthday. I think it was a little early. Um, my mother is a musician. She has a master's degree in music, and her main instrument is the pipe organ. 
So I literally grew up sitting next to my mom on an organ bench at church. And she was playing in this Lutheran church that we went to in Albion, Michigan with this beautiful historic pipe organ. And there's a college in town, Albion College. It's where she got her undergrad. So Dr. Mason, the violin professor there, who happens to be a very close friend of our family, uh, was playing Yezu Joy, Man's Desiring with the choir, the, the Bach tune. And so I was two, two and a half years old and I'm sitting next to my mom and apparently, I don't remember, I was kind of little, but apparently I was fascinated by this violin, just couldn't get enough. So I went home and my dad doesn't wear his hair like me, he uses a comb. So he's got a couple of combs and I'm pulling combs out of the drawer and I'm walking around, going, hey, look, I'm Dr. Mason on a violin. Cause that's just what a two year old sounds like. Hey, I'm Dr. Mason on a violin. And uh, I, apparently I did this long enough that my mom's mom, my grandmother, kind of asked my mom, she's like, are you gonna get the kid a violin or am I gonna get him a violin? And this is pre-internet, I'm really old. And my mom was like, I don't even know where to find a violin. Like they don't have them at the grocery store. And so looked around and was able to find a 10th size violin, which we still have, it's like this big. And uh, she found a teacher that was willing to teach a three-year-old and uh, yeah, it was all downhill from there. I have a really good sense of pitch. I don't know if it's perfect, like A440, A439 and a half. I don't know, it's it, it's close. Um, but yeah, I, I used to make lunch money at school. I'd stand on the other side of a piano and kids would be like, we're gonna play a note and you have to guess. That's what high school kids sound like. And uh, I, I would always get it. I would always get their money, so. My best violin memory, my goodness. I, I think I'd probably have to go with two. So my, my grandmother who encouraged me to play, or encouraged, basically bullied my mom to buy me a violin, was always my biggest fan. I actually had all four of my grandparents into my 40s, which is insane. Um, but my maternal grandmother was always, she was, she was the biggest fan. She, she liked everything, I, even the dumb stuff I did, she said she liked. And um, I had an opportunity to play at her funeral. She died well into her 90s and uh, had an opportunity to go back to Michigan, the same church that my family went to, um, and actually play along with Dr. Mason, the guy who inspired me to play. And I lived in North Carolina at the time, didn't want to fly my acoustic violin up there. And he said, actually, I've, I don't play the violin that I used to play. I still have the one that I'm pretty sure was the first violin you ever heard. Would you like to play that for your grandma? I was like, uh, yeah. So I actually got to play with Dr. Mason on the very first violin that I ever heard for my grandmother, who was the one who just really pushed my parents to get me into music. And that was one of those big full circle kind of moments. That was really, really cool. Um, I would say another great memory, uh, I had a chance to play Carnegie Hall a couple years ago with Emmanuel Joseph Bishop. And Emmanuel is one of the best living violinists with Down syndrome. And he plays electric violin and he and his dad were gracious enough to ask me to accompany him on the Sites Concerto at a, a violin competition in uh, Carnegie Hall. So I actually wrote a, um, a transcription of the viol of the, the piano part, the, the piano accompaniment. I transcribed that for six string violin. And I got to play my arrangement of the accompaniment for the Sites Concerto along with Emmanuel in Carnegie Hall. And my parents came out from Michigan, my wife and kids came up from North Carolina, and it was really a fantastic experience. We got to go hang out with Emmanuel and his family, got to walk around Central Park and just kind of, you know, got to do New York for, for a day or two. And, and play, and that was that was a really cool memory. Both, I'm a workaholic. Um, I probably work too much. My family will be like, uh, are you still in your studio or are you gonna come join us for like breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or bedtime or something? Yeah, I probably work too much, so all the time. Who's the most famous person on my cell phone? I can't tell you that. Uh, the way that you get famous people's phone numbers is that you don't tell people that you have their phone number and you dang sure don't give it out. So, um, yeah, not gonna tell you, sorry.
What's the very first song I learned how to play on violin? I think, I mean, like like any other violinist, um, I don't have anything plugged in here, but uh, I think it was a... I think it was that one. I think it was. What do you think? I like to perform. I practice so that I can perform, so I don't get booed off the stage and have tomatoes thrown at me. Um, but I like to perform. Actually, I don't really mind practicing either. I, I like to practice. Both. Ah, let's see. Mozart, Vivaldi, or Beethoven? Based on what I know about Mozart, he was the one who was most likely to get you kicked out of a bar if you were hanging out with him. So, yeah, Mozart. We get in some fights together, have some fun. What am I listening to right now? I think the last CD I listened to or the last record I listened to, D-Sharp just came out with a new album, all original stuff, and it is dope. I talked to him yesterday and his it's all original. He's been doing a bunch of covers. He's had all this original stuff laying around and we're all like, bro, you gotta put this stuff out. And he did, and it's amazing. So you should definitely listen to some of that. 